After a terrific first day of joint practices between the Green Bay Packers and the New England Patriots that saw Jordan Love and the offense as well as Joe Barry and the defense play extremely well against Bill Belichick and company, day two, the Packers took their lumps. Taylor Kyles, who covers the Patriots for CLNS Media, joins us on the show for a summer Friday to talk about all of it. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet, and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who starts their day, who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every single day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post that job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As I mentioned, day one, of joint practices between the Packers and the Patriots. Went to the Packers. There's no official score, but it did. The big takeaways were more about Green Bay. Day two, a lot more about New England, or at least New England won the day. I'm sure there are things, plenty of things we can say about the Packers, and plenty of things were said, including that the Packers did not respond well to the fact that there were a lot of scrums. It was a chippy practice, and... You know, without going too far down the rabbit hole, there certainly have been some conversations on this show and other places about the Packers' ability or lack thereof to counterpunch in games at times. I have pumped the brakes on that narrative over the course of the last few years, pointing out, especially last year, how many times they actually did come back from being down early. That Bears game is a great example of it. So... I don't want to go too far down that road, but one of the reasons why I didn't hang that on the feet of Matt LaFleur such that I had a criticism is because I hung a lot of it on Aaron Rodgers and his attitude and his poutiness. I don't know if you guys know this, but Aaron Rodgers plays in New York now. So, New Jersey. So, that's not a problem anymore. So, if you want to beat the soft allegations, you got to, you got to go out and do it. So, let's talk about this joint practice. Taylor Kyles from CLNS Media. Let's go. Joining me now from Green Bay, CLNS reporter on the New England Patriots, Taylor Kyles, whose show I went on. We had a little home and home action here. And so this is interesting because I, I went on my show yesterday, talked about how great the Packers were, obviously, and how great Jordan Love looks and all these great things. And then, of course, day two, the Patriots come out and they dominate. So yeah. to your eyes, what changed? So for one, one thing that stayed consistent, I'll say off the bat, was pressure. That's been an issue with the Patriots because they've got a pretty makeshift offensive line. That's been the case for a while. Uh, but we did see them actually overcome that. Like yesterday, there were plays there were plays where routes weren't able to develop. You saw the quarterbacks having to scramble. There was a lot of that. And there were bits of that as well in the two-minute drill, even during some of the red zone situations where that was a factor. But the biggest thing was the red zone. Like the Patriots were dominant yesterday. There was a catch for, um, I believe it was Devontae Parker had a touchdown catch in like double coverage. Demario Douglas had one against the twos on a whip route. And that's kind of just what he does. But for the most part, the Patriots couldn't do anything down in scoring territory today. I think Parker had two touchdowns. Mario Douglas had two touchdowns. Kendrick Bourne had a touchdown. Zeke Elliott was involved. He wasn't involved yesterday, which was probably the biggest change in terms of like personnel and usage. He had a couple scores um, in uh, the low red zone on goal line carries. So I just think they dominated in that part of the field. And in the two minute, I will say it was pretty similar to what we saw yesterday. It's like a lot of short throws. Again, pressure was a big factor. But the difference maker was yesterday the Patriots weren't going deep. 
today, they scored on like a 40-yard bond to Devontae Parker. It was tight coverage, but Mack and Devontae have really good chemistry on those throws. Obviously, Parker's made a career making 50-50 balls, 80-20s, yeah. and uh, managed to bring that one in. The whole crowd cleared the bench. It was hilarious because before that, Jabril Peppers and Jair Alexander were just talking. Like, Peppers on the sidelines. Jair literally turns around and is, like, walking towards him, and they're going back and forth. And the next play was the long touchdown. And uh, we also saw a deep shot to uh, Taekwon Thornton. I think it looked like a deep crossing route where he got way behind the defense and uh, made a diving catch. Left practice because I think he hurt his shoulder. But, I, one, the deep shots were a big difference, and the red zone work was much improved for New England. So there was also um, – it got a little chippy. There was an intensity level difference. And this is something that is something that has come up for the Packers over the last few years in the Matt LaFleur era mm -hmm. that if they come out flat, it's it can be hard for them to regain it. Or if they lose the momentum, let's say they start strong and all of a sudden mm -hmm. the other team starts to come back, they start to get a little deer in headlights -y at times. Now, I know this is just a practice, joint practice, but did it did it seem on the field to you from a Patriots perspective that that New England was playing at a different intensity level than Green Bay was? So I think it was different for sure. I think from what I heard and a little bit of what I saw, it was a lot of Green Bay doing a little too much after the play. And that was like really pissing guys off. I, I wish I was watching the defense because that's where I kept looking over. And every three minutes, it felt like there was some fight going on. At one point, like Keon White ripped someone's helmet off and threw it. Um, but I think the Patriots were able to just settle themselves down between those plays. And Jalen Mills even mentioned afterwards, when guys get chippy, you can kind of lock in because you just want to hit somebody. But if you focus it the right way, it's intensity. If you focus it the wrong way, you're just kind of putting yourself in a bad position where you're not really thinking, you're just doing. And uh, I don't want to say that Jordan Love was involved in this, but one thing I did notice was, and the rain may have had something to do with this. There was like a brief shower when the offense was going through two-minute drills. But he had a couple downfield opportunities I saw. It was a lot of dink and dunk, but there was one down the seam. There was another where Kyle Duggar lost a couple steps to one of your tight ends. I don't remember who it was exactly. And it wasn't complete, and it just seemed like the execution for the Packers wasn't there the way it was yesterday. So I definitely think that that could have been a factor in it. But I will say, just knowing the Patriots and having watched them, I think that intensity brought out the best in them. And they were like, mm, all right, you, you, you want to like make it a fight? We'll make it a fight and we'll bring it. And they seemed much more well-prepared. And uh, it was uh, that was the most fun practice I've watched since I got out there. I really appreciated it because that was very entertaining. <laughs> I saw uh, another Patriots beat reporter call it the best practice he's seen the Patriots have this whole offseason. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's part of this as well. Um, I want to ask you about Jordan Love because Matthew Judon was asked about Jordan Love. He's seen his fair share of quarterbacks over the years, and he had a lot of really nice things to say. Talked about the arm talent, the poise. I love it when a defensive player starts with something like poise, calm, like because that is ultimately what a defense wants to do. They want to make you uncomfortable. And so mm -hmm. if as a defensive player, you're going, yeah, he's calm back there. Like that's, that's the biggest compliment in a lot of ways that you can give to an opposing quarterback because Matthew Judon's job is to make your life hell. What did you see? Yeah, one thing that I really did like was the pass rush was all over him for most of these practices. So you didn't see any like forced throws. There weren't a lot of times where I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what Love saw there. I'd say the biggest thing was the accuracy where he was kind of up and down. There were plays where he was throwing dots to the sideline, like those deep outs where it can be tough to connect on those just because when you're throwing outside the numbers, you know, 15 to 20 yard plus range, you know, those are some of the harder ones to complete. He looked really good on those throws. I thought he consistently found the open man. And the best thing is against the Patriots, they're just going to force you to put long drives together. There was the one, obviously, Christian Watson touchdown yesterday, but that was just a great throw. Like, that's one of those where you go to the sideline and you say, okay, he got us. You know, maybe we tweak some things a little bit, but, you know, don't don't take it too hard. Um, but for the most part, the Patriots aren't going to give you those plays. I thought he did a really good job of going short when that was the play that was available and going downfield when those pre opportunities presented themselves. Again, there were a couple missed opportunities. There was also one where I wasn't – I think it was more of a drop by the tight end where he threw it into the end zone. I think Jalen Mills could have made a play on it, but the rain kind of made things a little sloppier during their session to be totally fair. Um, but for sure, in terms of his decision-making, I was really impressed. We'll get back to our conversation with Taylor in just a second here on Locked on Packers. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates 
available. That's half the battle, making sure the right people see your job and then you find those people in the process because you can be overwhelmed with applications. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy for you to focus on just the kinds of people with the kinds of skills and experience you want to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Every day, we are going to try to go live tomorrow, as I mentioned in negotiations with the hotel on a space to do that. So hopefully we are going to go live, if for no other opportunity, just for like 10, 15 minutes, but hopefully for a full show live on YouTube, that will be in your feed on Monday as, as a podcast, but it will be on YouTube first. Yeah, and and I think the note was from you it, on that long touchdown that that Christian Gonzalez was the was the corner on that side, and he actually made a really nice play to peel back. He just was too far out of position to get to Christian Watson. Not a lot of guys can make up ground against Christian Watson. That was one of the stories of day one, though. Um, yeah. Chad Graff mentioned how good he thought Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson looked on day one. This is a really good matchup. We talked about on your show the matchup between these young pass catchers. And this New England secondary, what did you see in those matchups? So the biggest thing for New England was that Jonathan Jones, who's really their best corner in terms of consistency, experience, all those things, he hasn't practiced in a couple weeks. So yeah. it was a lot of Christian Gonzalez, the rookie, a lot of Jack Jones, the second-year corner on the boundary, Miles Bryant in the slot, and then I think Marcus Jones alternated in there as well. They did pick on Marcus Jones a good amount. I would say I saw he's, just, he's a smaller guy, and I think they did a great job of attacking him with some of the Packers' bigger bodies where there wasn't a whole lot he could do. Um, but I was impressed from a Patriots perspective with how competitive Christian Gonzalez was. He had a pass breakup today. Um, I didn't see Jack Jones in today's practice, but yesterday he had one play where uh, Dobbs actually beat him deep, and he made a great recovery to break it up. And uh, there was the play. I, um, I forget who the player was. It was number 18, um, Malik Heath. Yes, there it is. Uh, he caught the long touchdown against Jack Jones. Where that's a UDFA Jones, pull. That's that's impressive, Taylor. I'm, I'm I'm proud of you on that one. That was nice. Thank you, but you guys have a lot of players with names, and I'm just like people are throwing them out. I'm like these are hard names to remember. But <laughs> a lot of young guys on that squad. Uh, but yeah, he caught it. Uh, he hauled in a pass from Sean Clifford. Perfect throw. Jack Jones was stride for stride. Just sometimes it's a perfect ball, and there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, so I really like the competition. Watching the offense, I could hear the Packers fans cheering for the offense. So clearly they were getting some work done on the other side as well. Um, and that's what you want to see. It's two young groups, the corners and the receivers. And from everything I saw and from everything I heard, it was really competitive on both sides. When when we talked about matchups that I wanted to see, uh, I talked about Luke Musgrave versus Kyle Duggar. And Duggar got a pick today, I, I believe, and, and Musgrave beat him yesterday. Were were there? Did did you see what I was excited about in Luke Musgrave when you in whatever opportunities you got to see him play? I hate to disappoint here. On the field, for some any time the deep the Patriots defense was up, I felt like their wall of linemen just mm. completely. Sh I could not see anything when they were running rounds. Um, <laughs> I would have to do a deeper cut again. There was that play where Kyle Duggar was a step behind somebody, um, and they were open, and Jordan Love just kind of overthrew him. Might have been Musgrave. I'm not totally sure. Um, but I, from what I just heard from people in the Boston media, I think Kyle Duggar had mostly a good day. That was definitely one though, where I saw him get beaten, whichever one of the tight ends it was, you got a whole young group of uh, young guys. So clearly somebody did something right against one of the better safeties in the league. So, you know, I don't want to both blow smoke and just make stuff up or anything, but you know, that was a good play because there's not a lot of times that you see Duggar uh, a couple steps behind anybody, especially you're welcome ends. to blow smoke always Taylor. That's just fine. <laughs> um, I do believe it was Musgrave on that route that, that awesome. love missed him on. Um, and, and just so people understand the mechanics of joint practice, it is not just a joint practice. There's really two practices going on at all times. And so yeah. it can be really difficult to follow the action. There's a field over here with stuff happening. There's a field over here with stuff happening. And so a lot of times what happens is you have to divide and conquer. Like you're like, okay, right. hey, other media friend of mine, can you go watch the offense? I'll watch the defense and then let's compare notes at the end so we can get this all 
handled here. Um, from from a, a Patriots perspective, um, a lot of the stuff that the Packers do, the Patriots tried last year. They wanted to be mm-hmm. a more outside zone team. They wanted to run this Shanahan tree offense stuff. How did you see the Patriots trying to defend? I know it's not a game plan situation, but trying to defend what Green Bay was doing and and being much more successful with it on day two. Again, my view of the defense was limited, but I saw a lot of too high shells, which is something the Patriots started to use a lot more last season. I think at some point they've conceded that we can play our main coverage and in certain downs and distances in certain situations, that's where we'll thrive. But especially on early downs where the Packers, they love to do all the bootlegs and all that stuff off play action. Patriots are like, all right, we can't play main coverage on first down. That's just going to get you beat in the ground game. So I think they've kind of conceded by saying, all right, we're going to play more too high, even if it looks like one high before the snap. And the Patriots love their disguises. We saw a ton of that where you got a guy uh, up on the line of scrimmage. He's a linebacker. You don't know if he's going to come or not. You see safeties down in the box and they completely flip or you have a corner who's in the deep path instead of a safety. And I did see there was plenty of disguising. So they weren't making it easy out there on Jordan Love. Um, But for the most part, like I said, when teams are going to play that way and use those two high shells, the smart quarterback's just going to go, okay, I'm going to go underneath, you know, receiver against the linebacker, find those matchups where you can thrive. And again, Jordan Love did a great job of that. But I thought both days, you know, there was, again, the touchdown to Watson, that was just a great play. But I thought they did a really good job of keeping things in front of them. And even Jalen Mills said when, you know, there's a lot of dinking and dunking going on as a defender, you don't want to get overzealous. You don't want to maybe get tired and just say, okay, you know, I got to get aggressive with this stuff or they're not going to throw behind my head. Because as we saw in the missed opportunities from Love, that will happen. As soon as you, you know, get a little too conservative in your drop, that's when they're going to throw right behind you. So I I did, again, there were missed opportunities. I think the Packers could have made it a little more of a fight. Uh, Again, tough situation because of the rain. It affected catching. It affected throwing. And that was pretty obvious because it was a pretty clean operation until that point. Uh, But, yeah, the Patriots are clearly trying to keep things in front of them. And for the most part, I thought they did a good job. So it sounds like you watched a lot more of the Patriots' offense against this Packers' defense. Day one, this Packers' defense, um, by all accounts, showed well. Um, And the pressure, you mentioned that, has been a a, a constant theme on both sides. Yeah. Uh, Anyone anyone you notice – on the Packers front play particularly well flash. And you thought, Oh, that's interesting. I did see one from Lucas Van Ness. I, I think he beat, uh, might've been Trent Brown. I saw him. He was over on the right edge. Um, and he was in there, but honestly, everybody, I felt like on the Packers defensive line had a pretty good day. Um, and that part of the ball, my area of focus was more on the receivers because again, this offensive line has two guys right now who are playing where they're going to be in week one. Mm. So I was saying, okay, these receivers are guys that we really need to know. How are they going to win? How are they going to compete? Especially after a day where, sure, the offensive line wasn't great, but you weren't seeing a lot of separation or easy throws necessarily that the quarterbacks were able to make because there wasn't a ton of separation. And that was one area where I thought they really took a step today. And you saw, like, Kendrick Bourne, I, I think it's online somewhere on Twitter, um, he had a really good route where he kind of threw a head fake and got a defender out of position, caught a touchdown, and, you know, he's... Yeah, not just any defender, Jair Alexander. Jair Alexander, there we go. Okay, I, I literally was, like, scrolling past it as I'm doing yeah. everything else. So, hey. That's awesome. Jair was not happy about getting beat either. It didn't sound like it after that, because again, a lot of John going on with the Jabril Peppers, but I always, man, that was a really fun practice because both sides clearly wanted it pretty bad. Just happened to be the Patriots day. All right. We're going to finish up here with our joint practice conversation. Look forward to Packers Patriots on Saturday night here with Taylor Kyles in just a second on Locked on Packers. Thanks for making Locked on Packers your first listen every day. Every dayers, go find me on subtext. It is my chance to communicate directly with you and you with me. I'm going to be sending exclusive content to our subtext group. Go check us out. Locked on Packers is the way you can find us. And go check out The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. An awesome, awesome Carrington Valentine story on there today from Jason Hershorn for subscribers. So go check out The Leap. Um, and also Locked on Sports today. It's all the biggest stories in sports in under 20 minutes, wherever you get your podcasts. As we look forward here to Saturday night, um, what are some things that that you think, well, what are some things you're looking forward to first to see with these two teams? I'd like to see the Patriots run defense when Emmanuel Wilson's out there. 
because I feel like he's a really good test where later in the game, you start to get some of the guys who are either fighting for roster spots or maybe they're more niche role players. Oh, I know for the Patriots, like Sam Roberts and Jeremiah Farms, a couple guys I'm sure Packers fans have never heard of, uh, but they're late round and undrafted. I'm 60% so- sure you made those names up. <laughs> But uh, there are some guys on the defensive line who actually did a really good job yesterday. As more depth players, they're probably just going to make the practice squad, but they showed pretty well. So I'm interested to see if the Patriots run defense, which was one of the best units in the league last year with their starters, if they can show their depth in that area and carry it over late in the game. Um, Because I'm sure Wilson's not going to make it easy on them. And then again, the tight ends, because the Patriots love their big nickel packages. I wouldn't expect to see Kyle Duggar out there, but Jalen Mills is their new tight end eraser. Uh, you see Joshua Bledsoe, who's a young safety that they really like, a later round pick for them a couple of years yeah. back. Uh, but he's a guy where they used him in the box a good amount. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Miles Bryan is more of a safety, but he's a guy who kind of mixed into the box as well. See how those guys who are going to play more niche roles in their defense, but are going to be on the field a lot because of the way that New England plays their safeties, how they're able to match up with the depth that the Packers have at tight end and then obviously fullback and Josiah Dubar. I don't know what you guys call him, but, you know, on our lads, he's a fullback. So whatever you want to tag him as there. The Packers official depth chart. He is now a fullback. He was a tight end for the first three years of his career. Mm -hmm. He has now been officially moved to fullback, though he's really an H. They just don't have a place for that on the depth chart template, I don't think, to put that. (laughs) But that's really what he is. Um, He was drafted to be Kyle Juszczyk, basically, for them Mm -hmm. in terms of role. Um, Is it fair to say that what the Packers saw this week in joint practices is going to be much more indicative of actual, a a theoretical Packers-Patriots matchup versus what we're going to see on Saturday in terms of both scheme and players on the field? I would say so. I, I don't think the Patriots are trying to throw the. I mean, it's tough because you say they won't throw the kitchen sink, but because this defense has so much chemistry together, they can do more than you would expect. Like it's not just vanilla cover two. It's not just like, okay, you see the defense. That's what they're going to give you. They're advanced enough where sometimes it'll look like cover two and it's actually cover zero. And even in the preseason game against Houston, you saw them kind of use some looks that aren't super conventional for a preseason game. So I think if it were to be a real match, Belichick is a sicko. We know that. Exactly. Yeah. So you'd probably see a little more of the crazy stuff, but uh, yeah, I think maybe in the preseason, they'll dial it back a bit, but I would say that he was not trying to make things easier on Jordan love, especially because you like, if you're going to start out week one, throwing some more unconventional things at quarterbacks, you'd like to get it in, get those reps in, in joint practices against another team and see how well you execute them when they don't know what's coming and they haven't really seen those rotations and disguises before. So one of the, you mentioned the, the, that run defense of the, the second string, basically the second group for the Patriots, the, those more fringe guys, the Packers run defense for their starters, not great last year. Yeah. Are we going to see enough players from the Patriots number one offense to give the Packers any sort of look in this preseason game? Do you think? I don't think so. I couldn't. I can't see them putting Trent Brown out there because they. This is the past three practices the Patriots have had are the first time he's been competitive um, in live action. So don't think you're going to see him. David Andrews. They're not going to risk him getting injured. I don't think. Um, but that said, they're playing two rookies on the line right now: Antonio Moppy and City So. Riley Reeve, I think, is another guy where they already know what he is. They're just trying to see where they want to use him. So he's probably not going to play. Um, but that said, like James Ferentz is probably going to get a lot of reps out there. He's been in the league for a long time, seen a lot of starting caliber players. Um, Connor McDermott, he actually didn't practice today, so I'm not sure if you're going to see him necessarily. Um, but their young guys are talented. Uh, the issue with them in the last preseason game was the chemistry in their run blocking wasn't there. I think with the top unit, you did see that was pretty solid. But you saw like there were combos that weren't being executed very well and kind of hanging guys out to dry. So – if their run defense is dominant, I think anytime, even if it's backups, if any of your units is doing a very, very good job, you know, that's probably a pretty good sign. If they struggle and the Patriots run all over them, that's a big, big red flag. Yeah, not great, Bob. Taylor, this was so <laughs> great, man. If people want to go um, find out more of the work that you're doing, uh, where can they find it? Yes, sir. So I'm the Patriots supporter for CLNS, as you mentioned. Check us out at clnsmedia.com. Check out my name. And then on Twitter, at T-K-Y-L-E-S 39. That's 39 for Danny Woodhead. Look him up if you're not familiar. He's a sicko in his own right. (laughs) All right. Thanks to Taylor for joining the show. Great to talk to him. As I mentioned, we did a home and home. So I was on his podcast and now he came on mine. Really smart guy. Um, And I really enjoyed that conversation. I hope you did as well. As I mentioned, we're going live tomorrow after the game hopefully plan for it. If not, I'll let you know on Twitter. 
Um, follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, like we are going to do tomorrow night, you can come check us out on our YouTube page so you can stay Locked on Packers.